You too, team keep it clean. Sit down, because we got plenty to talk about. First and foremost, happy September. Happy regular season football month, because in eight days, we will be getting the first regular season football game between the Bucks and the boys, the Cowboys. Um, so, we excited for that, but more importantly, in a little bit longer, a couple days after that on Monday Night Football, that's when we get the real stuff. But anyway, anyway, um, as we know, uh, yesterday was the day where the 53-man roster was finalized, and we know that there is really no such thing as a final roster uh, in the NFL, but the Ravens, they um they had been very busy as every single NFL team had been because they had to make additions, they had to make subtractions, and they had to do some flip-flopping and maneuvering to get certain players on and off the roster. Um now, with the Ravens, with their linebacking uh group, there've been a lot of rumors and a lot of questions and just a lot of people wondering like, man, what are the Ravens going to do at inside linebacker? And then some familiar faces that people brought up, like Patrick Onwasu, uh, Josh Bynes, and there were some other ones. But those two, a lot of people talked about them, especially Josh Bynes. And me, whenever somebody asked me about it, I was like, mm, no, I can see why, because he's familiar with the defense. And it, yeah, it makes sense, but I don't think the Ravens would be looking in his direction. I don't think they would be eyeing him. But like plenty of other things that we've talked about on here before, I was wrong. So, Jeff Zrebic, he said, uh, Ravens will be bringing back a familiar face. They are planning to sign middle linebacker Josh Bynes to their practice squad per sources. It will be Bynes' third go-around with the team. Uh, Ravens' four inside linebackers are all young. So, Bynes, who was released by the Panthers yesterday, will provide some depth and experience. And that is very true. That is exactly what he brings. Depth and experience. Experience in the NFL. Experience with the Ravens. And I guess with, with Josh Bynes, Every time that he's with the Ravens, they have a lot of success, like a lot. Uh, his first go around, they just won a Super Bowl. His second go around, uh, they went uh, what, fourteen and two. So Josh Bynes, when he's on the Ravens, yeah, he he does his thing. So this season, I'm expecting this season to be amazing. Now since we got the boy Josh Bynes back, I'm expecting us to do some crazy things. So shout out to him. Now, um. Zrebic also talked about how the Ravens could possibly add uh, Jalen Moore since he cleared waivers. He also talked about Trace McSorley, in which it was expected that Trace was also going to clear waivers so they could add him to the practice squad if they want to. Now, addition by subtraction, even if it's not by choice. Now, Nigel Warrior. Let, let's just go back to the video that we did yesterday where we talked about Nigel Warrior, and this is what we had to say. Now, uh, he will pass through waivers. Now, you got to feel like this is somebody that the Ravens, if he makes it through waivers, you got to feel like they're definitely going to bring him back to mm -hmm. the practice squad. Right. You feel like, like he almost, like he has to, if he passes through waivers. Big if. Now, uh, there could be teams like the Patriots. The Patriots, you know yeah. they love some old Ravens defensive players. They sure do. If you play defense for the Ravens, Patriots, they, they got an eye on you. Always. Um, but I just, I don't think he's going to make it back. I really don't. If he don't. And he didn't. Nigel Warrior did not make it back. I didn't expect him to. I didn't think he was going to. I hoped that he would, but he didn't make it back because the Seattle Seahawks, they put in a claim for Nigel Warrior. So he almost made it back, but nope. He sure didn't. So now he is headed to Seattle, and I hope he does his thing over there. I hope he does well. Um, and the Ravens, they knew the risk going into it. They knew the risk with cutting Nigel Warrior. They knew that there was always going to be a risk if you let him on the waiver wire because another team could claim him, and now he's gone. So I hope he goes over there and just kills it uh, with the Seattle Seahawks. And I hope he really gets an opportunity too because that's the biggest thing. Uh, I know as fans, we always want all the players to stay on the team. We want them boys to just be there. So just in case, as backups, as depth, as special teams, as starters, we want those boys to stay with the squad. But got to also root for them for when they get their chance too. So hope Nigel Warrior goes out there and, and does what he does. Now, another uh, subtraction was at the running back position. Somebody who I thought may clear waivers. And that was Mr. Nate McCrary, uh, the running back who very, very, very excellent decision maker. Uh, he's a quick decision maker, too. And as a Ravens running back, that's exactly what you had to be. I thought that he made clear waivers, but he didn't. 
The Denver Broncos. So it's possible that in a couple of weeks, the Ravens could actually be going up against a Nate McCray. We'll see, though. Uh, but the Denver Broncos, they put in a claim for Nate McCrary. Uh, so that leaves the Ravens a little thin at running back because we don't know what the status of Justice Hill is as of right now. Um, so our for sure running backs, our healthy guys, are Gus Edwards and Tyson Williams. Um, Justice Hill, his status is unknown, and Nate McCrary is not on the practice squad. So we don't have any running backs. So it's... They now they they have to add somebody like we already knew they were going to add somebody, but now they have to. And another thing to think about, something that we brought up in the live stream and I, and I talked to a few people about it, too, because um, we heard John Harbaugh speak about, oh, no, we we're good on running back. We believe in all of our guys. Yes, we, we, we have faith in all of our running backs that are on the team already. We got our guys. We're good. We're good. Trust us. But. So many times they said that before about positions, even this year, Eric DaCosta, when he was talking about the wide receivers, he said, it's, it's insulting how you guys talk about our wide receivers. It's insulting that you guys will feel like we need to add a wide receiver. It's insulting the way you speak of the guys that we have on the squad at the receiver position. It's insulting. And then he turns around and then drafts two receivers in the first and the fourth round of the draft. So when these coaches, when these GMs, when they say that stuff, oh, yeah, we're confident in the guys that we have. We're confident in the guys that we have. Like, they're confident in the linebacking group. When, when LJ Ford went down, they said, oh, yeah, we're confident in the guys that we have. They go sign Josh Bynes. We're confident in the guys that we have at running back. They're going to sign somebody. Who that is, I have absolutely no clue. I didn't I talk to so many people. Some people heard about some Le'Veon Bell stuff. I do not think he is a good fit at all whatsoever with the Ravens. Not one bit. Um, but I, I just, I don't think he's a good fit. I just don't. Uh, Todd Gurley, that was temporarily shut down by Josina Anderson. There's some other running backs out there. There's plenty of running backs out there. Um, but we, we'll see what they do. They're definitely going to do something, though. They're definitely going to do something. Um, but now we just got to wait. And shout out to Joel Embiid. Uh, who was getting on media today. He said the media, they they always creating a bunch of lies and stories just so they get a bunch of followers. But just like Joel and B said, we got to just trust the process. Uh, and if you don't trust it, then <laughs> that's fine too. But we just got to wait the process out and we got to see how everything goes. Uh, but team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I, I, I love y'all. Uh, I appreciate you all for trusting our process. Oh, thank you all for 44,000 subscribers. We done hit 44K. That's such an awkward number, but I'm appreciative of that awkward number because it's another step forward and wherever this thing is going to go, where it goes, who knows? I don't know. No clue. But I'm grateful for where it's been uh, and where it's at right now. So thank you all. Uh, I appreciate you all. And shout out to everybody that came through on that random live stream yesterday that just popped up out of nowhere. Thank you for that. I love you. I appreciate you. And without further ado, we out. Bye.